Hello, everyone. Welcome to this technologycatalog.com webinar. My name is Vincent van Beuzekom, Managing Partner, and I'm responsible for the technology catalog development and operations. Today, we'll be discussing two technologies from the catalog in the integrity domain. And for that matter, I'm joined by Luis Corrado from Sonosco and Derek Sumption from TubeTech, who will be presenting their technologies to you today. The first presentation that we'll start in a minute will be from Sonosco, who will be presenting their web-based integrity management solution, and in particular, the module focused on pressure um, equipment integrity. You can find this technology via the technology catalog if you go to the maintenance and integrity module and then into the in inspection submodule where you see the uh, technology card as shown on the screen. The second technology from TubeTech is also in, uh, found in the maintenance and integrity module, but then go to the sub-module around industrial cleaning and decontamination, and you'll found, find the fouling removal robot from TubeTech in that sub-module. Before I hand over to Lewis, I would like to point out to you that if you have any questions for the presenters, we'll pick them up at the end of the each presentation, and you can ask the question by using the chat functionality that you see on the right-hand side of the screen. If you happen to watch this presentation through the uh, recorded session, you can still ask questions to uh, Lewis and Derek, but please use the contact function on the technology page uh, to reach out to them or um, drop us a note, and I'll share the uh, email address for that at the end of the session today. At this moment, I would like to hand over to Lewis for the first presentation. Lewis, over to you. Thank you, Vincent. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Um, so I, my name is Luis. I work for, with Senosco, who is a major software development company that uh, develops uh, mainly integrity and reliability software uh, for over uh, 20 years. So I'm going to be talking more about the pressure equipment integrity module, what we call PEI, under the IMS platform. So um, I will not be talking too much about the core functionalities, but some a very specific application. So um, it's it, it's a given in this presentation the value of implementing an integrity and reliability uh, uh, application in your plant, focusing on uh, uh, saving leaks or avoiding leaks and avoiding damage and avoiding accidents. So the uh, return on investment on this kind of solution um, is just huge for uh, most of type of assets. So objective here is that I want to, we want to show how to put your data to work and achieve real integrity status and inspection optimization. Um, so I would like to start with um, uh, just a quick overview of a typical approach for integrity management. Uh, this is the bread and butter for Senosco. That's the stuff we've been doing for 20 years. It's, it's all about uh, getting the right people to build up your corrosion loops, your integrity operating window, build up your RBI, um approach you know build your R rbi system um build up your corrosion management through uh circuits and manage your corrosion manage your wall thickness measurement predict corrosion rates predict a remnant life and all of that will feed uh, into your uh, inspection plan and scheduling so uh, combining risk-based inspection with your corrosion management will give you that next inspection date. So you are on track of your uh, inspection activities. So once you do your inspection uh, according to the plan, yeah, that result is, is usually fed back into the RBI and into your corrosion management module with your remnant life being updated and getting all the new inspection intervals. So that makes a, a dynamic 
risk-based approach. So every time you do an inspection, a new risk, a new criticality is generated, a new inspection is, is, is planned based on that result. If you have any issue, if you found the damage, that you can trigger that and have that interface into um, this, any CMMS application like SAP uh, or IBM Maximo. So that's the bread and butter. That's the stuff has been happening for quite some time where process data and uh, the RBI uh, analysis is done uh, uh, on the spot as needed. And then we're going to look at the new approach. Uh, that's that's what the stuff we've been developing uh, lately. That's already up and running. Uh, that is, you still have your you still have your multidisciplinary team to build your corrosion loops, to build your in, uh, integrity operating window, find your failure modes, and then you still have your RBI approach. Uh, still risk. Uh, uh, it's a dynamic risk calculation with your corrosion management through your wall thickness measurement. So you still have your inspection plan, your schedule, your uh, interface with SAP, for example. Uh, the main change now is the, 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 the now we have the degradation management framework. So now the system will have uh, barriers to control certain damage mechanisms. If you have a damage mechanism and you you implement a barrier to avoid that damage from happening, you get a barrier status. So if it's green, it means, yeah, your barrier is up to date. You're doing whatever is possible to avoid that degradation to happen. And that result is fed into your RBI program uh, and your inspection plan. But now as you have that degradation, those barriers implemented, those that barrier status, is going to be fed into your inspection plan. So whenever the inspector goes on site, he's going to see the status of that degradation barrier. And then if you find a damage, that barrier yeah, will change status. Say, OK, my coating is a barrier. I found an issue in that uh, coating. So your barrier change status. You still interface, full interface with SAP. So you have that barrier change. Once you implement uh, that maintenance, your status will change again and will regain that green status as, uh, yeah, your barrier is up to date, you're in full control. Until you, in, you, until you implement that maintenance activity planned, your status will remain uh, bad. So you have to keep an eye on that. So that's shown all over the platform. In addition to that, to that those degradation barriers, you we are, we have integrated process data or the PI, uh, a PI data into the degradation management framework. So your live process data is now fed into the degradation management framework, as we call DMF. So whatever you have uh, been operating outside your integrity operating window, you're going to have a flag indicating you've been operating outside the window for that for that period. So now your degradation barrier uh, status will change and then say, now you have to pay attention. Then it's going to trigger a note to your uh, RBI team and say you have to review that RBI analysis, for example. So now you have all your inspection data feeding to, uh, to your degradation barriers fitting to your maintenance team and the result of the maintenance is also fed back into your rbi program so that's a more holistic view uh, where you actually put the data to work rather than just running inspection inspection results and running that process and, and how how does that work for example yeah, we have a degradation mechanism. We implement several barriers, for example, can, can be a corrosion inhibitor, which you're going to track via a, 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 a PI uh, interface. You can have your corrosion allowance that's going to monitor through uh, corrosion calculations and uh, corrosion rate prediction. And you're going to use that barrier uh, throughout the system. So every schedule you make, every plan you make, you're going to see an indication of that barrier. So that's going to be an indication uh, pretty much everywhere. So finally, all of these, uh, it's done through a, a, um, a subscription model. So you get always the latest and greatest technology, um, like it's a, it's a web-based application. 
uh, it's also a given that we have a full integration with uh, CMMS applications like SAP or Maximo. So all your equipment data is broad. It, 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 we bring that into the application so you don't need to build your asset hierarchy. Um, we, all, we already have a full 3D modeling that can also be modeling in an iPad, for example. You make annotation on the 3D model. And all of these come in a package of five modules um, from, for maintenance for, for very different applications. All of these on the cloud, hosted by Microsoft Azure. And um, our biggest partner today, it's, uh, it's Shell. So it's, it's, this is the official Shell methodology and tool. So this is implemented already in all the Shell assets. Uh, worldwide, so so we we operate in pretty much all the oil and gas countries or industrialized countries. We 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 have our food there, delivering training and implementation of these application. Yeah, that's in all a right. short view. Thanks a lot for that uh, introduction, uh, Louis. Thank you. Um, I see that there are no questions yet from the uh, the folks online. So just a reminder for for those of you that uh, join in a bit later, if you have any questions for uh, for Lewis or the same for Derek later on, please use the chat functionality on the right hand side, and then we'll pick up your uh, your questions. Uh, while we wait for for the questions to to come in, perhaps um, a question from my end, uh, Lewis. Now that you have the the three D model on the on the screen. We see a lot of, of operators investing in either, you know, uh, uh, building their 3D models or bringing them up to um, up to date, keeping them up to date. Are there any special requirements in terms of the 3D models that that would be required to also combine it uh, with with your tool set? Yeah, it's it's like any uh, 3D use uh, the 3D model. We support any type of 3D data, so whatever format the client has, we can we actually convert to our own because our application is lighter, so you can run in a, in, a, in on the web. The only thing we need the, the the 3D model to have the data about the equipment, so you have to identify link the equipment data to your equipment database uh, you can't really do like a, a get a drone <laughs> fly around and get a 3d model and and try to run that kind of application all right uh, thanks and um, another question that um, uh, popped up you know the in the in the, uh, in the presentation you really took us through the uh, the, the steps of the, of the process could you perhaps also say a little bit around the on the on the impact side of the technology? So, uh, where do you see your clients really having a positive business impact by using your tool compared to the conventional uh, approach for integrity management? Yeah, the clear benefit, the clear uh, advantage of of using the tool that we've been tracking is the what we call leak save, is about avoiding that leak. When you go a time-based, sometimes it's too late to avoid a leak due to corrosion, for example. And our tool allows the operators to anticipate that. Sometimes your time base is every five years. So now, because we are applying that, that methodology, you have to inspect every year. So we are inducing the client to inspect before it happens based on the inspection results. So, you know, if you look at the, uh, a, a leak that caused uh, half, uh, one quarter of a day uh, stop of a plant, and you see how much uh, a production loss costs, we've been looking at uh, you easily bundle up of as a, in millions the cost uh, related to to leaks alone. Yeah, not considering even explosions and other type of accidents. So it pays off itself quite quickly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, I don't see a question yet coming in from the, the people um, online, but uh, what we can do, Lewis, is just see if, if the questions come in uh, during the next presentation and we can always come back to them at the, uh, at the end of the session. Sure. Uh, in view of time, I would like to uh, now move on to the next presentation, the presentation from TubeTech. So um, for that matter, I'll be handing over to, uh, to Derek. 
And uh, so there, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're just going to load our presentation up now and get started. Hi there, and welcome to our webinar on improving asset life, safety and CO2 emissions by using our robotic cleaning solutions. This is brought to you by True Tech International. I am Derek Sumption, R&D manager, and I'm joined by Adam Stevenson. He's a mechanical design engineer who designed the rover we will be talking about. Who are Tube Tech International? Tube Tech believe in improving profitability by engineering solutions to remove process fouling. The company ethos has been to invest in research and development to push the boundaries of technology to provide innovative solutions to cleaning in all industrial areas. The cost of fouling. Individual small to medium refineries report losses of three to four million dollars per year due to fouling. It is a fact that fired heaters consume 50 to 70% of all energy on the site. Data from Europe and the US suggests just 2% inefficiency in this area can cost 750,000 to 1.2 million more in fuel burn per year. Fouling significantly affects plant performance, asset reliability, asset life, efficiency, safety, environmental impact, and the profit for your company. I'm now going to hand you over to Adam. He's going to take you through the rest of this presentation on the Mark 6 rover. Thanks, Derek. Hi, guys. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I'll be talking about our new Mark 6 robot, a completely automated cleaning and reporting system. Uh, before we get into this, I'll first play a short corporate video that should give you a good overview of how this system works. Our robot is pre-programmed with information provided by the client, including tube dimensions, fin height, horizontal and vertical tube spaces, and tube supports with heights and access holes. The data is used to create a data sheet unique to the asset being cleaned, which is then loaded into the controller and sets optimal cleaning positions through an algorithm. This is used in the visualization suite and used by technicians as an on-site guide and forms the basis of our reporting package. Once on site, our technicians mobilize the robot. Controlled remotely, our intelligent cleaning lance slides down between the tubes using high pressure, low volume water to clean deep between each row. Real time still images and video capture the process. With an effective diameter area of just 100 millimeters, the robot ensures pressure stays away from the refractory. Prevention of damage to the refractory is the reason we aim to clean 90% of the heat transfer area. The proximity of the cleaning head to the fouling means that it easily removes even the hardest types of fouling, such as cement, sulphur and concrete-like deposits. Unlike traditional cleaning methods, our robot will tackle any kind of fouling, and at the end, we present the client with detailed reports, images and feedback. We're proud to say that robotic fouling and removal technology from TubeTech delivers unrivaled cleaning results and ensures no asset damage in the safest possible environment. Our clients see a reduction in stack temperatures, lower CO2 emissions, an improvement in asset life, and a significant return on investment. Okay, so Mark 6 Robot Automated Cleaning and Reporting. Uh, led by innovation and customer focus, as well as considerable in-house investment, uh, we're proud to announce the arrival of our Mark 6 Robot. It's a fully automated system. Uh, it's now being deployed and already delivering next level of, of high pressure cleaning, um, coupled with a fully integrated report system that can be passed straight back to the customer. So we'll look at the reporting side in detail later in the presentation. So where in the furnace? Well, the robot drives inside the convection section of a furnace directly on top of the coiled tubes. I'm sure most of you are aware. Um, it cleans using a flush bar, usually configured to have three jets pointing down onto the tubes and two in the opposite direction uh, to stabilise the robot as it drives, really. Um, pressure on the flush bar is up to 500 bar. Um, it also cleans using a lance um, up to 1.5 metres long, and this cleans between the tubes. Um, the lance is fitted with a rotary jet at the end, um, and the pressure on the lance is up to 1,000 bar. So here we can see images showing flushing and lancing. Um, the top layer of a bank is flushed and the layers below are cleaned with the lance. Um, if we look at the image on the left, we can see the rover driving along the top layer of the furnace bank with a flush bar fitted. 
Um, at this point, it's worth mentioning the front and rear guides actually that drop down between the tubes before the robot drives. Um, these keep it aligned when required and then stop it from falling into the furnace, causing any damage. Um, if we look at the image on the right, uh, we can see uh, a front view of the rover with the lance deployed. Uh, the correct angle of attack to ensure the lance fits in the gap between the tubes is calculated by using furnace dimensional information provided to us by the customer. Uh, the number of layers in a bank will determine how long the lance needs to be um, and each layer is reached by angling down the pitch of the lance. So Mark 6 Robot Next Generation. Let's look at some of the features that make it just that. Um, low voltage electronic control. On site the robot will run on 110 volt power. The Mark 5 in addition to power and water also required an air connection to run air motors. So the Mark 6 uses less resources, the refinery and setup time is reduced because of that. Articulated automated lance system. Uh, once our data sheet is loaded into our controller software, the robot can then place the lance into all the possible cleaning positions in any particular furnace. Um, it excludes those near the refractory walls, of course. Um, adjustable track pitch system. <clears throat> the pitch of the tracks can be adjusted dynamically from 150 to 355 millimeters maximum. Uh, this suits most of the furnaces that we work in. Um, they're moved on linear slides by stepper motors. Uh, the pitch is set by data input and can be easily adjusted on site if required. Um, our Mark V robot was based on a modular design, so any adjustment would require a rebuild, uh, which might take a few hours to complete. So it's, it's a really simple system and a great new way to change the pitch of the tracks. Uh, five camera video system. There are three onboard cameras, front, rear and underside. Um, the underside camera looks back between the tubes under the robot. So this is good for taking photos and videos before and after the clean um, and show blockages that the other cameras might not see. Uh, there's two further camera sockets on the control box and you can add external cameras if required. Uh, we cannot record video or take photos on the Mark V, so again it's a big step forwards. Distance control and clean times, we can now control precisely how far the rover drives. Um, this is useful when cleaning small sections of the furnace across all the rows. Uh, we also provide cleaning time data for flashing and lancing based on our three standard speeds. So this is a great time management tool now. Uh, auto adjust on warped tubes. If a tube is warped for a length of the furnace, we can move the track affected further out to compensate. Um, cleans above and below. The lance can be angled upwards as well as down, enabling cleaning of tubes above the robot. Uh, fully programmable. Yeah, the Excel sheets loaded into the software program the robot fully to clean the furnace in question. Um, these are loaded up in minutes and can be easily modified and updated as and when required. Uh, volumetric light controls. We have daylight LED lighting on all four sides of the rover. Each can be independently controlled on off or dimmed. Um, it's 6,500 Kelvin daylight spec. Um, in-house 3D printed components. 60% of the parts are 3D printed in-house in a mixture of ASA, chemically resistant material and nylon based materials. Um, this is obviously a cost effective and easy to modify parts uh, and allows us to easily produce spares as well. Automatic cleaning report generation. Yep, this is a key step forward. A report is automatically generated in Excel format. It will show all cleaning data with visualizations as well as photos before, during and after the clean. Details of any issues such as warp tubes or blockages will also be included. So it's a great, great after uh, detail to be able to output now. Uh, compact physical size, travels in its own custom case and weighs 28 kilograms. Um, the actual dimensions of the rover itself are 230 by 230 high by 700 millimeters long. So it's a, it's a compact unit. So Mark 6 controller, uh, the Mark 6 robot has its own newly designed compact and portable control box. Um, so let's look at some of the features in this new controller. Well, it's a smart system. Um, it's easily programmable for any furnace configuration. We use the Excel data sheets as we've discussed. Um, it records videos and images. Um, you can record before, mid and after the clean. Um, you could actually record the entire clean, but it's probably unlikely, but it is possible to do that. A uh, compact 23 kg portable IP68 Pelly case. Uh, most of the time we, we start by hoisting this up to the top layer of the furnace. So um, it's a nice compact size. 
um, records blockages or sections of warp tubes in the convection section. Uh, very useful for our customers to know the state of a certain bank in a, in a furnace. Um, high res display detailing all control settings and video. Uh, it's very clear to look at the controls and the video in this system, so it makes life easier for our operators. Um, and full report outputting to the customer, so you get distance cleaned before, mid and after cleaning images, blockages and, and any other concerns recorded and tagged. So onboard cameras, we've already discussed a bit about these. Um, they record images and video of the cleaning process and any issues that might occur, such as blockages and warp tubes. Um, images and videos are always taken for mid and post clean as these are a core part of the final output report. You need to take them for it to output the report, in fact. Um, the image on the right shows the position of the three onboard cameras. You've got the front, the rear and the underside. So information is key. The robot is easily programmed to clean any furnace by inputting dimensional data supplied by the customer. Uh, this mainly consists of coiled tube, horizontal and vertical pitch, uh, overall tube diameter and convection bank length. Uh, TT staff can utilise this information before being on site to ensure the best cleaning process can be selected for each job. Um, when on site, the system allows for total flexibility and adaptability if actual dimension information differs from the data supplied. Um, adjustments can be made very easily in minutes. Um, so it's a very flexible and time-saving system. So this last section of the presentation will uh, show how the robotic clean is visualized by the software. Um, so once a data sheet is loaded, a visual representation of the furnace bank to be cleaned is shown in the software. This graphic will be populated as each section is flushed and lance cleaned. This graphic shows that the first three meters of the bank have been flushed. Uh, this might be the first enclosed section of a bank in a furnace. This next graphic shows that the entire bank has been flushed, so the entire top layer, everything's blue. So once the top layer of the bank has been flushed, uh, we'll then start to use the lance. Uh, this visualisation shows that the cleaning positions 1, 2 and 1.1 have been cleaned for 3 metres with the lance. Um, you see a green outline. Um, again, this could be the first uh, enclosed section of a bank. This graphic shows that cleaning positions 1, 2 and 1.1 have now been cleaned along the entire length of the furnace with the lance. So the green outlines are now solid. Um, flush data is also shown. Um, flush and lance data can be shown together or separately for analysis. This slide shows the graphic uh, representation you get when you recall blockages. Uh, blockages are represented in red. The exact position and duration of the blockage will be recorded. Uh, along with images and videos to ensure that the customer has a full record of the issue found. So a report of the clean will be automatically output by the software. I think we've covered some of this before, but it's worth going over it again and reiterating. Um, a report of the clean automatically output by the software in Excel format and contains all the information on the banks, rows and layers of the furnace that have been cleaned with fan and lance jet, along with photos and videos taken before, during and after the clean. Okay, that concludes our presentation today. Thanks again for joining us. Um, hopefully you now have a better understanding of how the system works and more importantly the benefits of using it. Um, I'll be available during the Q&A section following on shortly to answer any questions you might have. Um, but for now I'll hand you back to my colleague Derek Sumption. Thank you. Okay, thanks Adam. I'm just going to take you for a recap. Uh, so fouling reduces productivity, it increases CO2 emissions and this can cost you millions of dollars every year. The fouling reduces the asset life and can pose a safety risk. There are solutions available out there. I mean, our Mark VI Rover and our Shellside Jet are good examples of these. And our automated cleaning is used to improve the safety uh, for the people involved and the safety on the site. Uh, it increases your asset life and it achieves superior results compared to the manual cleaning that is used these days. Okay, so if you have any questions, we will be around at the end of the webinar. Um, once again, thank you for listening. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. All right, thanks very much, um, Derek and, uh, and Adam. So let's, uh, let's open the, uh, the Q&A. Let's first see if there are any, uh, any questions already um, online.
I see actually the, the first question from David is uh, is around the uh, the recording of the of the webinar. So you missed if you missed the first part, uh, our recording will be uh, available online on the Technology Catalog website within the next couple of days. So you can always uh, um, go back and see the first part of the the presentation by Sonosco. And then let's look at some of the other uh, questions. So Thomas has a question for you, Derek, uh, asking how is the cleaning done now if you compare it to your robotic technology? So the cleaning at the moment is done on a manual basis through the opening of the uh, furnace doors or they cut holes in the furnace. This is done outside using what we call a gun or a, a long length lance. So really you're only blasting high pressure water at the top uh, of the tubes. Some people use CO2 um, and there is other mediums you can use as well. Uh, all of these though only have access through that, that central point and to the top of the tubes. The difference with our technology is the rover is actually on the tubes and the lance goes in between the tubes and directly contact is the fouling that's underneath. Um, and that's that's a major difference between our technology and other technologies. Okay, thanks. And then the second question from Danny, who's asking, how is the unit tethered, and how does it walk from tube to tube row? And perhaps some, something to add, which also was was my curiosity, on how do you deploy it in the um, uh, basically um, into the furnace? You know, does that require human entry? So perhaps you can elaborate on both at the same time. Yeah, so um, to to deploy the unit, we can fit through the smallest holes, and as you as it's deployed inside by one of our uh, technicians, we then can expand the unit to a larger size to fit the furnace. So we have a minimum entry hole. Uh, once it's put in, it can expand out to the deployment size. Uh, you have to, at the moment, uh, a person has to put the, the rover onto the tubes, but once it's into the system, there is two ways to go across. We have a pallet that drives the rover across, depending on how your tube tubes are, because if they're warped, it, it can be dangerous for us to drive across. But the unit can also turn and drive across if required. Uh, most of the time at the moment, we use a little pallet system that, that takes you from one tube to the next tube. Um, from outside of the unit. So once once you've had deployment uh, of the rover, there's no more entry. And there's never any man entry when the water jetting or high pressure uh, fluids are being used. Okay, Just thanks. A... Yeah. Danny, I hope that answers your, uh, your, your, your question. And the, uh, if perhaps in relation to that is, the, I mean, you've, I mean, of course, the presentation is focused on on the robot itself, but the the mechanism, appear, you know, is based on high pressure water jetting. Can you perhaps say something around uh, what the total footprint is of the all the peripheral equipment that you need to run the uh, the operation with the robot? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we do need a high pressure pump. Uh, usually, this is outside of the furnace systems, so it can, we deliver the water from wherever we are placed to the furnace using high pressure hose systems. Um, with a safety barrier around that, we, we have to be in complete control of that area anywhere our systems lie. Um, but the footprint of a technician, the control box and the rover is actually very small. So the scaffolding around it can be minimal sizing. Uh, a lot of the time these furnaces are not really made to be cleaned and we find that the scaffolding is, is small anyway. And that's why, Many of the times in manual cleaning in the past, uh, you wouldn't be able to get much of the tubes cleaned, where now we get up to 90% of the tubes by using the rover. All right, thank you very much. I see no further questions from the, uh, from the people that uh, are, are online. So I think also in view of time, I would like to, uh, to wrap up this, uh, this session. So I would like to uh, thank the two presenters um, for today for your uh, in very interesting presentations. Uh, thanks for all of you that have, have joined. If you have any uh, questions that pop up at, at a later stage or you're viewing this the recording of this uh, session, you can always reach out to us via info at technologycatalog.com or reach out to uh, Lewis or Derek via the contact option on the uh, page in the uh, technology catalog. So thanks for, for joining today's session, and we hope to see you again for the uh, next webinar. Bye-bye.